Uh, welcome to the Highlands Park Society's annual Act of Remembrance, here in front of the Halex plaques in Hayland Library. My name is Sandy Christian, I'm the Chairman of the Highlands Park Society. The Highlands Park Society was set up in 2005 with the aim of promoting community life. This annual ceremony, we believe, is a very important local event. Over a hundred years since the start of World War I, we stand in historic Hale End, West Essex, now Hyams Park in North East London, to honour those who have given their lives for our freedom. The Dead by Rupert Brooke. Blow out you bugles over the rich dead. There's none of these so lonely and poor of old, but dying has made us rarer gifts than gold. These laid the world away, poured out the red, sweet wine of youth, gave up the years to be of work and joy, and that unhoped serene that men call age, and to those who would have been their sons, they gave their immortality. Blow, bugles, blow. They brought us for our dearth, holiness lacked so long, and love and pain. Honour has come back as a king to earth, and paid his subjects with a royal wage, and nobleness walks in our ways again, and we have come into our heritage. In 1919, at the end of a war in which millions of British and Commonwealth subjects died, King George V issued a proclamation, and it said, all locomotion should cease, so that in perfect stillness, the thoughts of everyone may be concentrated on reverent remembrance of the glorious dead. This year, our nation has been marking the 100th anniversary of the Third Battle of Passchendaele. 100 years ago, between July and November 1917, the fields of Flanders witnessed one of the most savage and bloody episodes of the First World War. The Third Battle of Passchendaele commenced on the 31st of July 1917. There was torrential rain which turned the fields into a quagmire. It lasted for three months, one week and three days. The Allies finally captured Passchendaele. However, a third of a million British and Commonwealth troops had been killed. It was with a feeling of sadness and envy that I found myself a seat in that crowded train, still clutching my parcel of good things which Mother had packed for me. I think that it was my mother who sustained me now and in all the hours of suffering to be endured in the future, of which I thank God I had no knowledge. It is but little mystery that in the days to come I would hear young men crying out in agony and despair for their mothers. Mother, for God's sake, help me! was a common enough cry as strong men died in agony on the blood-soaked fields of Flanders. It is no wonder that the petals of the poppy of Flanders were coloured blood red. After a short night's rest in the camp at Boulogne, we were off on a train to the front. We arrived in the late evening. I found that my unit was up on the ridge, as we called Passchendaele. I remember that I slid very silently into the transport lines and hoped that nobody would realise that I had returned. I crawled into a corner and went off to sleep. Before dawn, I was awakened. My arrival had been reported to the officer commanding by the quartermaster on his nightly visit on the ration wagon. I was told to report to the unit in the front line before dawn. My route was mapped out by the orderly sergeant, then off I went to find my way blindly into that quagmire of mud, mud, mud. I did not realise that so much mud could be piled up in one small area. Communication trenches were either non-existent or impossible to negotiate owing to the great areas that were now flooded. So it meant following the line of the trench as near as possible while stumbling round the crest of each gigantic shell crater, fearful of tumbling into the slimy water <coughs> where already bodies of comrades floated in various attitudes of frozen death. No longer was I afraid of the shells whistling overhead, for this was replaced by a dread of finishing up in a watery grave. I seemed so alone out here and was eager to locate the position of our headquarters as soon as possible, even if this meant that I would be even closer to the enemy. The feeling of security with one's own unit was felt by most infantrymen. With the men of the front line, there was a unity, a belonging, an affinity even with Jerry in his front line. We were fighting this war. We were the men who were suffering every discomfort and on the receiving end of every crackpot order that came down the line from GOC to the officers. It was we who, in the end, paid the price of blunder after blunder. 
This feeling often overcame the enmity for a moment. He'd even cross over no man's land with the assurance that if you didn't fire at me, then I would leave you alone to make your position much more endurable. Such was Passchendaele when there was a lull in the fighting. The first poem we heard by Rupert Brooke, Glorifying the Dead, contains many worthy sentiments, but it is much more important to take in and then pass on the stories of, of men like Edward Bridges. <coughs> These plaques once stood on a grand Portland stone obelisk on Larksville Road. This is, therefore, an industrial war memorial, but here in Hayland Library, these plaques have a, a civic significance. In 1974, when the Halex works closed down, the Portland Stone Obelisk was broken up and the plaques were transferred to Halex's sister factory at Brantham in Suffolk. The Committee of the Home Spark Society felt that it was very important that these plaques, upon which are writ the names of many local men, were brought back to Hymes Park. After the Brantham factory closed, the plaques were stored in a barn in Suffolk but after a lot of hard work, we brought them to their current home. We hold this our annual act of remembrance, as in a state of deep respect for these men. Hayland, Chapel End, Chingford Hatch, where most of these men came from, were small, far-flung settlements in 1914, a long way from the places where these men fought and where some are buried. Memorial Tablet, Great War, by Siegfried Sassoon. Squire nagged and bullied till I went to fight under Lordy Darby's scheme. I died in hell. They called it Passchendaele. My wound was slight and I was hobbling back and then a shell burst slick upon the duckboards so I fell into the bottomless mud and lost the light. At sermon time, while Squire is in his pew, he gives my gilded name a thoughtful stare. For though low down upon the list, I'm there, in proud and glorious memory. That's my due. Two bleeding years I fought in France for Squire. I suffered anguish that he's never guessed. Once I came home on leave and then went west. What greater glory could a man desire? On these fields of Passchendaele by Dan Lake. On these fields of Passchendaele, skylarks sing and cattle graze. In these fields of Flanders, lives were spent in far-off days. No hint of what went on here, no sign of blood and bones, but 60,000 souls rest here beneath the white headstones on these fields of Passchendaele, where roam the silent sheep. The only sound of the wailing winds, those mothers who still weep over fields at Passchendaele. On these fields of Passchendaele, men walked against the fire, while lead and splinters fell like rain, they clung to blooded wire. They prayed to God Almighty that this day they might get through. But God's not listening, Tommy son. He hasn't time for you on these fields of Passchendaele, where donkeys planned their war. Far from the filthy trenches, they were spared what lions saw on these fields of Passchendaele. <laughs> On these fields of Passchendaele, I stand without a clue of what you poor men suffered or what you had to do. But I can feel your pain as a vice surrounds my heart that crushes breath within me till it forces tears to start for men who died so bloodily from gas or lead and shell, who drowned in blood and mud in this place of utter hell on these fields of Passchendaele. And in proud and grateful memory of the gallant men who left this place to fight in the cause of liberty and justice and who laid down their lives in the Great War 1914 to 1918. C. Ames, A. Andrews, W. Baird, T. W. Brook, A. J. Brooks, J. L. Burt, J. Castle, H. Cox, G. Daflon, P. Digby, H. Dinsdale, T. C. Edwards, T. Elms, E. Frost, S. J. Giblin, G. Glynn, W. Goodman, A. J. Hastler, S. J. Hollingsworth, F. C. Howes, E. Highland, C. Keogh, A. Lewis, C. B. Lockwood, W. Martin, C. Murrell, A. Neville, A. Newland, L. North, a. Nova, T. Oakley, 
GJN Polly, E. Richardson, J. H. Rumble, H. Searle, H. Shaw, A. Salter, G. F. Smith, H. Smith, T. Sorrell, G. E. Stoddart, W. Stowe, W. Tanter, F. Ward, and in proud and grateful memory of their comrades who died for the same cause during the years 1939 to 45, M. M. Carter, F. Dallas, C. Lewis, F. B. A. Simmons, W. Smith, D. A. Sorrell, A. West. The name liveth forevermore. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will, we will remember, remember them. them.